So in this episode of Can a Dumbass Do This? I'm not going to show you how to port. Obviously, there's YouTube videos on that. What I'm curious of is can a, just a regular old guy watch these videos, port his head, and be successful or destroy it? The first question you should ask yourself is why? Why would you want to port this head? Of course, to get more power to go faster. More horsepower. There's only two ways to make horsepower. Horsepower is just a mathematical derivative of torque and RPM. You have to make either more torque or more RPM. The idea is behind porting is we'll be able to turn more RPM. Typically 200 to 500 more RPM. The other option is more torque. You get more torque from a bigger piston, your big bore kit, but you get more RPM from things like a cam, head porting. The problem with trying to make horsepower for more RPM is you're going to get into valve float. If you pull off your valve cover you'll notice that this cam spins around and lifts a rocker arm that pushes your valve down and that opens and closes your valves. But let's simplify that. Let's say the cam sit directly on the lobe like this. So as that cam spins around it pushes down the valve and pushes it open. So it pushes the valve open but what closes the valve? Your valve spring does. Your valve spring is working opposite of your cam. So your cam is trying to push the valve down but your valve spring is trying to push the valve up and close it. It takes a lot of horsepower to compress that valve spring. Keep that in mind. So as we get going faster and faster in RPM, this cam spinning faster and faster, this cam will get to the point where it'll spin so fast that spring cannot keep up with it. It'll spin that valve open like that and the valve will still be open and then it'll snap closed when the spring catches up. That's floating the valve. We have went too fast for the valve spring. It opened, it stayed open, and then it comes closed. So there's a big air gap in there. It's not following the cam perfectly. That valve spring has limitations. The solution is heavier valve springs. Now what's valve float feel like? On our GY6s, it feels like a loss in power. When that valve floats, it stays open too long. And if that stays open on the compression stroke, you're not going to make the compression you're supposed to. Air is still escaping, you haven't made a good seal, and you lose power. Fortunately, on the GY6, when we lose that power, the bike slows down. Valve float can lead to a catastrophic failure. The spring wouldn't keep up, valve would stick open, piston would come up and hit that valve. But we feel the onset pretty well on a GY6. Let's say you're at 9,500 RPM, and you're doing 60 miles an hour. 10,000 RPM, you're doing 62 miles an hour. That makes sense. And then about 10,200 RPM, you drop down to 59 miles an hour. You're floating the valves, so definitely let off the power. You've exceeded the RPM these springs can handle. So the solution is we need heavier springs that will push the valve closed and keep up with the high-speed cam. And they sell performance springs. Look, these are titanium. Wow. Okay, these are NCY. They're good to 11,000 RPM. Hayata makes a set of springs that's a lot better and more expensive, and they're good to 12,000 RPM. But the Tayatas are out of stock everywhere. The problem with heavier springs are they weigh more, more inertia. Think about this. The 150 has heavier springs. Same size but heavier. Look at a 150 spring. It's the same exact size. You can get strength in your spring from length or gauge of the wire. The thicker the gauge of the wire the stronger the spring is. This 150 spring is about 2.7. The 50 spring is 2.38. So why not we'll run a 150 spring? It's got to be good to like 14,000 rpm. Well because it takes too much power to turn that spring you're gonna lose horsepower. Just because a heavier valve spring is a cool race part and the cool race guys run it, don't prophylactically throw a heavy spring in your head. If you're not turning the RPMs, don't put it in there. It'll rob you of horsepower. So remember the stock ones were 2.46, 2.38, whatever. The titanium NCY ones are 2.57. So they're kind of right in between the 150 and the 50 springs. What the hell? Wait a minute. Huh. They're not titanium. Ah, they're electroplated. So why titanium valve springs? Because titanium valve springs are lighter. These are just thicker. That's how they're getting their increased RPM rating. They're just thicker gauge wire. So does that mean a 150 can turn 11,000, 12,000, 14,000 RPM with these thick valve springs? Cubic inches and the horsepower and the size of the engine has nothing to do with these valves opening and closing. The reason these springs are thicker is not because a 150 turns more RPM. It doesn't at all. They're thicker because the valve is heavier. It's a bigger valve. Look at the difference in the size of these valves. There's a 50 valve, there's a 150 valve. It has more rotating mass and you have to have a thicker spring to hold it in place. The intake valve is always the big one. The exhaust valve is a small one. There's your intake valve, there's your exhaust valve. The intake valve weighs more. 
the intake valve is going to float first. There's website 49ccscoot.com. The guy puts some um, weights on them and measures the uh, compression on them. They're 14% more than the stock springs. 11,000 RPM should be realistic. Now, what about the inner springs? Titanium. Well, the stock inner spring is 1.82 titanium electroplated NCY racing spring. Oh, 1.77, 1.8. What the hell? It's not any thicker. But check out what it is 30.20 on the stalker, 31.39 on the NCY. So it's longer. So that's going to give you more springy. And that should help. So yeah, they went uh, thicker with the main one. They went longer with the little one. Stiffen the springs up and give you more RPM. Of course, it's going to rob you horsepower. But the idea is we make enough RPM. We make up for that horsepower loss that we're turning the thicker spring with. And then gain some. There's always diminishing returns. And you have to get above those diminishing returns to see the horsepower gain when you're using performance parts. So my goal is to increase horsepower with RPM on this 50. Since there's not much I can do in the way of torque other than than the big board kit and that'll come eventually but right now i want to see how fast i can get a 50 going a true 49 cc and i had to be realistic about my rpm goal so i usually notice valve float around 9500 and above i start noticing it maybe between that and 10,000. And it's just a little bit, it's just a hair, but you can see it on the speedometer. The speed will actually come down. So I think 11,000 on RPM springs are a good idea. When we left off, the bike did worse with the uh, 95 millimeter variator. So I put the stock variator back in. The best results are still with the stock variator, the NCY cam, and the Nibby carburetor. 42 miles an hour, 13 something in the zero to 30, and the one eighth mile, 18 something. A little bit, 9,300 RPM. Now it's a 95 degree day. It's 42 miles an hour. And hopefully we can get more RPM or horsepower and beat those times. All I know about porting is I thought it was some kind of science. I'm sure it is. And I'll uh, use a flow bench. I'll measure the flow through the cylinder head. By removing metal or adding metal, make it flow better. I've pulled motors out of my uh, race bikes, inline fours, taking the heads in and have them ported. I didn't notice that much difference, but of course I was working with nice Japanese heads. People say though you'll notice a lot of difference if you do these like little lawn mowers or little 50s. Let me curious to see if I can pull it off. Or will I just destroy the head and make it run shittier? And since I got an extra head, I can always give it a try. I just have to buy some gaskets. I can do it for the price of a head gasket. So I got a bunch of these bits for my Dremel. Little carbide things. I don't know what the hell those are. And all sorts of crap. Same stuff I see the guys are using when I watch the YouTube videos. I have this extra 50 head laying around from when I put a big bore kit on someone's bike. It's like brand new. Can a dumbass like me make any difference? They're saying the main thing to do is port matching the intake. Like these little bumps right there. Things like that. Getting rid of that stuff. Getting rid of um, that big bump down in there holding the valve. You can see there's quite a bit of meat to head between this and this. Maybe I'm supposed to transition that better. Yeah, the little teeny wire brush seemed to take that off pretty good. And the guy said to polish the inside of the head. My Dremel kit came with this jeweler's rouge, so I hit it with that first. I think I'll just use his mother's polish on this little fabric wheel here. I guess that's polished. It looks pretty shiny. So he said leave the valves in for this part so you don't nick your valve seat. Now I take the valves out and do these parts. So the guy says you just have to smooth out that, what he calls the floor of the exhaust and intake port. That's where the light's coming in right there. At the bottom part of that, just smooth that out. So I got the floor pretty smooth and he said don't try to make the hole bigger. Just try to smooth out the transition between where the uh, port meets the exhaust pipe and where the port meets the intake. So I got this Nuraku spacer for the big bore kit, but I'm going to use it on this and I'll change it maybe once I get the big bore kit. So now I'm going to try to port match that head to that spacer. So it all is kind of smooth, that bump right there. Then I'll bolt this spacer to the intake manifold and do the same for the spacer to the intake manifold. Now you can see it all kind of flows in there evenly. We'll see if that helps. It looks like there's a lot of rough stuff inside this intake I can smooth out. Little bumps and grooves. I can match this up better. There's a big ridge where it turns into the... That matches up a lot better. Now I'll smooth it out. That intake's definitely more matched up now. It all kind of flows in there. And this does too. When that goes on there, it'll be a nice smooth transition for the air. Not going to pass up a chance to lap the valves. Some valve grinding compound. Lap those in. Underneath your valve springs, these little washers, those are valve shims. One underneath each of these, so I'm going to keep it like that. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. But a trick you can do is you can put two valve shims on one side, like that. The shoulder's tall enough to hold them, and that's going to make your spring tighter. So you could take and also shim your valves to get a tighter spring. But I'm just gonna keep the one in there like it came with and go with heavier NCY springs. After you put your valves in, put your finger over the spark plug hole. 
fill the combustion chamber with some kind of carb cleaner or choke cleaner or something like that. You want to make sure it doesn't leak out. Make sure that valve lapping job you did worked. There's your ported head, NCY titanium electroplated. Valve springs in. We're ready to put it on. See if it made a difference. I think it sounds cooler. 49cc hot rod. Hold ready to go. I'm gonna take it out and run it. See if we can beat last time. Yeah, I think those heavier valve springs are sucking all that horsepower. That and the fact I don't know how to pour it ahead. It was about the same. in the eighth mile a little bit slower but those are very negligible 43 miles an hour what is that one mile an hour faster on top speed oh zero to 30 was a 12.7 on that run so that is quicker but yeah here's a zero to 30 run um 12.3 that's a lot quicker 18.8 in the eighth mile that's quicker too there's a 12.5 in the zero to 30 so just doing some random runs here yeah 13 seconds so uh it looks like it did get a little bit quicker faster on the top end by maybe a mile an hour i had a bunch of 42 mile an hour runs also and then a couple of uh, 43 mile an hour runs so that's negligible one mile an hour difference on top end uh, the RPMs really weren't that high. I'm going to have to go to lighter rollers, try to get those RPMs up there to make those springs worth it. I think the valve springs were too heavy for it. And I think on that one I'll do a rollers versus sliders test. So to answer the question, can a dumbass like me port match a cylinder head? I guess the answer is yes. It didn't get worse. It didn't blow up. I know people are going to say, oh my god, you suck. You can't port. Well, of course I can't port. But I've got news for you. I've had a lot of my race bikes ported by pros. Cope Racing out of Fort Myers. Um, Eric Gore, you can look him up online. I can honestly tell you this, it doesn't make that much of a difference. It's not that big of a deal. I've never been like, wow, what a difference. It's nothing like um, the difference you get from milling ahead, you know, shaving 10 thousandths off of it. You can scour the internet and YouTube and you really won't find any before and after porting videos other than just pictures. There's tons of videos of people showing you how to port and how cool it is and how good it looks and what it looks like afterwards and all their advice. But you really don't see any dyno runs or performance reviews afterwards. I really wouldn't recommend porting. And I know I'm no professional. What I did probably didn't make a big difference and it's probably not worth the effort. But I have had stuff professionally ported and honestly I didn't notice that big of a difference.